This video is meant to provide a quick demo of the Flightstream software. This is a blank Flightstream simulation, like what you'd find when you first open Flightstream. For this demo, I'll import an already meshed aircraft geometry. This aircraft has been made using the component cross-section file format. I'll import with the default settings. Here we can see the imported geometry. I'll turn on the mesh view to get a better look at the mesh. This quad dominant mesh has been made automatically by the CCS file format. First, I'll detect the trailing edges. The trailing edges are a type of boundary condition that tell Flightstream where to shed wakes from. Wake shedding allows the vorticity problem to be well posed and allows for the calculation of surface pressures and thus integration of aerodynamic forces. If we look closely, we'll see that the mesh is not watertight. All components in this geometry are fully intersecting. I'll have to use a unite operation to remove the parts of the components that are inside other components, such as a fuselage. Now this is a watertight model. Next I'll use the topology window, which shows various mesh diagnostics. I'll use this tool to select all the mesh faces on the left-hand side of the coordinate system. I'll click this button to select. Now I'll zoom in just to make sure I've captured the mesh faces on the vertical tail correctly. Once I'm happy with the selection, I can simply click Delete. Next, I have to ensure that the edge of the aircraft lies perfectly on the symmetry plane. To do this, I'll select an edge and then use this tool to select all the connected edges. Under Planes, I can select the XZ as the plane to project to and then this button to project the edges cleanly. Now that I'm happy with my watertight half model, I'll select this button to auto-detect wake termination nodes. Wake termination nodes prevent the wake from being shed and makes the problem more numerically stable. Now that the mesh and the boundary conditions are set up, I can go into the solver to set up the physics that I want to simulate. Here we see various options that allow us to set up viscous models. Since I want this to be a high Reynolds number case, I'll set the boundary layer to fully turbulent. If I knew the surface roughness, I could use it here and this would affect the skin friction drag value. Here I'll enable viscous coupling. This will enable a viscous solution to run after the initial inviscid solution to calculate the decambering effect of the boundary layer. And finally, I'll enable axial flow separation model on the wing and horizontal stabilizer so that I can capture the CL max install behavior. Next, we can take a look at the coordinate systems. I have set up a moment reference point ahead of time at the CG location so that I can calculate the aircraft moments about this location. With that, I'm ready to initialize the solver. Here we see the initialization window, which allows me to select the solver model, as well as if I want to use symmetry boundary conditions. I'll set the wake termination location to default, and then click initialize. For most problems, the solution will initialize under 10 seconds. Now before running the solver, I'll set up a few of these solver settings. Here we can see angle of attack, free stream velocity, and the reference velocity and length and area. It's necessary to specify these to calculate the correct aerodynamic coefficients. Now I'll go ahead and run a solution. We can see the live contours updating as the solution progresses. It's also possible to view live plots of various things such as the residuals in order to monitor the solution's convergence. Once the inviscid solution converges, a second viscous solution will quickly run. Once the solution is complete, we can interrogate the solution with a variety of post-processing tools. First, let's look at the overall aerodynamic coefficients. We can view these in the Analysis tab. Let's just quickly change the coordinate system so that the moments are taken about the CG. And we can see the aerodynamic forces in the body and wind axes. In the post-processing section, I can create a new distribution of surface sections. Surface sections allow us to calculate the integrated aerodynamic forces at various stations along the wing. Here I'll set up 10 slices parallel to the XZ axis along the wing. Once the sections are generated, they should be visible along the wing. These sections allow us to calculate the sectional loads. These can be exported and then applied to a FEM model to calculate the stresses in the structure. Next, we'll take a look at one of our more popular toolboxes, the Solver Sweeper. The Solver Sweeper allows you to set up 
sweeps of popular parameters such as angle of attack and side slip to generate aerodynamic databases. Here I'll set a sweep to run from 0 angle of attack to 20 in steps of 5. We'll come back in just a few minutes when this is done. Here we are back after about 10 minutes of runtime. Flightstream has automatically completed all of the cases. In the plots window, it's possible to view the results of the solver sweeper. And here we can see a nonlinear lift force. This is due to both the viscous coupling and the axial separation models we enabled in the beginning of the solution. Back in the solver window, I'll take a look at a few contours. First, I'll take a look at the separation marker. This is a Boolean marker which tells us where the flow is separated based on the pressure grading criteria applied within Flightstream. Now I'll take a look at the displacement thickness of the boundary layer. The takeaway here is that despite being an inviscid solver, the models within Flightstream allow us to estimate these viscous properties. And finally I can show the coefficient of pressure over the geometry. I'll quickly update the color range for better viewing. I hope this demo has given you a good feel for what Flystream can do, but there are so many more topics yet to cover. Please ask your Altair representative for more information.